this computer. Hello and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today is January 22nd, 2023. I'm Doubter Five or Larry Rhodes. And uh, with us, we have our co-host today as usual. Hello, Wombat. Hey, I'm the Wombat. What's up? Cool. A digital free thought radio hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. And our special guests today are the John Richards from England. Welcome. Hello. And Dread Pirate Higgs from Western Canada. Welcome. Arr, how the devil are you? Uh, we'll be talking about the devil in just a minute. <laughs> <laughs> And if you think that you're the only non-believer in your town, well, you're just not. In Knoxville, in the middle of the Bible Belt, we have a group of over a thousand of us, almost 1,100 now, mm -hmm. Atheist Society of Knoxville. And we'll tell you more about them after the mid-show break, so be sure to stick around. Wombat, what's our topic today? Why not just destroy Satan? Which is a question Indeed. to us by our own uh, uh, Redditor. Uh, honest classic 6950 we're going to get into that and i think it's an interesting topic but before we do that save that main course and let's have some appetizers how about some noodles and who better to lead us in our noodly appetizement than our own dread pirate higgs for our weekly vacation Arr, our noodly lord who art in a colander i'll dante be thy noodles thy blood be rum thy sauce be yum with meat as it is with vegetables Give us this day our garlic bread and forgive us our cussing as we forgive those who cuss against us and lead us not into ketoism, but deliver us some carbs mm. for thine are the meatballs and the mm. sauces and the grog whenever and ever. Amen. Nothing hits like some good carbs. I can tell you Arr. that. Mm -hmm. It's really, really good for you. All right, guys, I'd love to catch up. Before we dump into the main topic, Dread Pirate Higgs, Quest for Chaos, General Life in Canada. <laughs> Hopefully you have some sunlight going on there. How's life been for you, my friend? Hey, not, not too bad. I uh, We had pasta on Friday. Um, so that's our, our monthly get-together and nice. feasted over some good, wholehearted uh, noodles and sauce. Uh, I also had a uh, conversation in the morning with an investigator from the BC Ombudsperson Office. Okay. With respect to uh, my plight with uh, the Ministry of Justice and Public Safety about my private investigator's license, mm. and they're having um, first photographed me, allowed me to have my license with my hat, with my tricorn, and then demanded it back three months later, saying, if you don't give it back, right. it's, we're going to punish you. Uh, like take away your license so uh yeah. anyway so we've got the ombudsman on it and um we'll we'll see i will keep you all updated you have great firsthand now experience and i'm sure you've had others in the past but of fighting a system while following the system's rules right yeah yeah and it can make you understand why when the stakes are so much more dire why people try to go out of the system to protest mm -hmm. because the system the mechanics for a system to change within the system typically aren't designed for people to disrupt the system, right? right. And so right. you can see why people are now like, this sucks, time to protest in a in a more dramatic right. fashion, right? Exactly. Yeah. All yeah. right. It's, it's tougher, you know, and like you say, I do have that experience of, you know, trying to beat your head against the, the drum to make right. a noise when in fact the key is to use uh, the system's own uh, bureaucracy and policies in order to undermine undermine itself. Right. Yeah. Because generally, people that you know build these institutions are generally stupid. Right. Yeah. And so you know, it's it's just a matter of finding the flaws mm -hmm. and uh, worming your way through uh, yeah. until finally, you, until you make it, you fake it until you make it. Go ahead, John Richards. Dread, in yeah. order to make a noise by, you know, beating your head against a drum, one of those things has to be empty. <laughs> <laughs> Why can't both be empty? <laughs> uh, man, I had this other... That idea. resonates with me. 
<laughs> so <laughs> in a similar way, in a similar way, it's I also think that it's there's a difference between highlighting flaws and getting people to care that the flaws are there. It's it seems like they should be one and the same if everyone's in the same interest yeah. as you are of yeah. working towards a better system. But yeah. when they favor a certain group, even if they know the flaws are there, they don't care because they have and that's flaws. absolutely true. Right. Um, can- I, I, I do. I hear it all the time. You know, like, well, you're a pacifarian. Obviously, obviously, you're ridiculous and you don't believe that stuff. And it's like, oh, I just point the finger back at your own self there and right. have a look at what you believe, you right. know, outside your test of faith. Right. Just have a look from an objective point of view and, and tell you, ask yourself, uh, does a big boat with two of each species uh, in a worldwide flood? actually makes sense to you okay, well, talking if it does, snakes or... then you're on the same level as i am and uh let's just live and let live so i've been on the call with boudreau i've been at his place and we've had a round table discussion before about this very topic and a mm. christian who was with us uh while we we're talking about religion brought up the idea that pacifarians don't actually truly believe in their in their noodle god and what do you think about Tatai? And I said, I don't care because it doesn't matter whether they actually believe or not. It's the fact that the system is now putting them in a marginalized status where they can't, you know, where there's institutionalized favoritism on certain yeah. ideologies and not theirs, despite right. the fact that there's no true or should be a barrier or test of faith for any mm-hmm. reason. Like you shouldn't be like, well, you know, I don't think you actually believe it. Therefore, you shouldn't get the rights that these people right. who I do think believe. Exactly. It, that shouldn't exactly. be the case. It doesn't matter whether yeah. they actually believe it or not. So we shouldn't be asking that question. We should just be asking, are we fairly divvying out these rights to everyone? And should we even in the first place? And if not, right. let's just take this all off the table and find a different criteria to follow. Yeah. In my opinion, John Richards. According to the theory of mind, okay. we can't know what a person believes. Right. Right. So. <laughs> what's this guy on about you know yes well right. you know and and it, and it could be said too that there are people who are willing to express themselves uh outwardly as belonging to a particular faith for reasons other than believing in the faith i mean right. certainly there are people of uh you know hindus or sikhs or muslims who are um you know compelled under their sort of cultural milieu or social milieu to conform um, in order to participate in that culture. Uh, you don't get a job in a Sikh neighborhood unless you, you know, you're demonstrating yourself as a Sikh, whether that's wearing a turban or wearing a bangle, which is what uh, many of the non-turban wearing uh, Sikhs wear. Um, but, you know, again, it, it, it doesn't, it doesn't mean that you believe in the things that you say you do. It right. just means that you outwardly profess that. And right. those very two different. things are very different. Very different. Right. It could be a sheep in wolf's clothing. I, yes. It could be an atheist, atheist in bishop's clothing. Sure. Yes. <clears throat> oh, there, oh, there are oh, several oh, I, reasons. I have to, I have to say, I, I don't, maybe I mentioned this last week, but I actually was contacted by the president of the clergy project. Oh, cool. He's a uh, he's a pastafarian, and he's now joined our our church, and uh, we're going to uh, work together on some future projects, hopefully. Yeah. Doctor Five, you had a comment. I was just going to say there's several different reasons for people joining certain religions, um, besides social pressure and, and sure. religious pressure, um, like if you're a businessman and you move into a certain city, and it's ever predominantly southern baptist you're going to join the southern baptist church right southern you know make business context especially if you're Um, a realtor yeah yeah and there's love people uh, change religions all the time because their spouse or girlfriend or whatever has a certain religion Um, there's lots of reasons to join religions besides actually believing the tenets of them right And it doesn't make the religion any more true that you were pressured right. or, it doesn't mean it's or true, threatened right? Right. or have to take it yeah. as just say, eh, right. I got nothing better to do. Like it yeah. should be from a point of hopefully demonstrable evidence that you are convinced that it's true and nothing yeah. else. And the right. fact well, that a lot of people can believe religions for any other reason, myriad of reasons, is an indication that 
maybe the majority of the people who profess that they believe don't actually have any good reasoning for it in the first place, yeah, right? Yeah. John. So the, the definition of belief that I like is a proposition that a, a person, uh, hang on, let me get this in the right order. It's a personal attitude towards a proposition. Okay. Mm. And there's no way it's personal, which means it's in here. Mm. So there's no way any, anybody outside of here mm. can detect it. Right. Right. Um, and I also think of this too, in the sense that when, when civil rights was taking place, I think, I think the people who are in an advantage position could see those in disadvantaged positions and be like, yeah, I don't want to want to switch places with them, right. but the system is favoring me and I don't want to lose that in the event that I get closer to that. So I will maintain this system, even though I'm aware of its flaws and its corruption, I'm going to just continue to support it because it's for my family that I want to protect. Not just yeah, then, it's, it's still going it, on. It's mm. silent support, right? Right. Yeah. And I feel like the same issue that you're having with your Pasifarianism is basically that, but just in a different dress, right? It is essentially yeah. an institutionalized group saying, I don't want to give up any of our status to, to introduce you into the group. We essentially have a, what's the right word? A union that allow, now I'm not, I'm not against unions, but I'm just saying we essentially have a union where we can decide who comes in and who comes, yeah. who comes out. It's the in-group, out-group thing. And we don't want to dilute our privileges by letting you in. And so even though we know we're all, I'm, I'm basically being uh, hypocritical, I'm going to still allow it because I'm in the position of power and the system benefits me. That is a very frustrating thing to do within the system useful for it's in my head it's useful to have people in the system and it's useful to have people outside of the system top down bottom up approach towards getting change to occur it has to come from all fronts so i appreciate that you taken the most one of the most frustrating uh avenues to get this done dread i really do yeah thank, thanks i appreciate the support i really do mm. it's right. uh it is it's very exhausting it's certainly had impacts on my uh i mean it's a good thing i work for myself for the most part Mm. because uh you know mm. i couldn't i couldn't hold a regular job i'm sure right and uh you know and not face uh ostracization from either my peers or my managers right yeah listen you know? i can tell you if i was like a, a grade school teacher and i was doing this podcast or if i was doing even the street epistemology stuff that i was doing way back when that would really scare me with regard to the safety of my job the fact that i'm mm. a yeah. scientist just adds more credence to the work that I'm doing here. But I can and imagine- a lot of people don't yeah. have that assurance. Exactly, exactly. And a lot of people are even scared to just have the license plate start with uh, letters. Right, <laughs> state, right. right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly, good point. Speaking good of point. which, so yeah, there's, there's all sorts of fronting going on. Maybe that could be a topic in the future. But Larry, I'd love to get the video game review of the week. What's going on with you, my friend? I'm still playing Star Citizen. I'm still nice. Thoroughly enjoying it, but my computer is my graphics card is three years old. It's really dragging. <laughs> but I've ordered a new one. Okay. Have you have stopped playing this Eve? week? Have you stopped playing Eve altogether? Yeah, for quite a while ago. About okay, a year okay. ago, I stopped playing Eve. Do you find but I'm Eve... still play WoW? <laughs> okay, but do you find yeah, Eve, I see you Eve, are once in a while. Eve yeah. is less intensive than Star Citizen or Star well, Citizen is <clears throat> Eve, but personified well, from a 3D perspective. Star Citizen is so much more than Eve. Uh, I'm glad Steve's wow. not here to hear it. <laughs> wow, oh, sweetie Steve. But I mean, on Star Citizen, you're a, you're the ship, basically. Yeah, I'm I mean, uh, in out. Eve, in Eve, you're the ship. But in Star Citizen, you own a ship, and your friends can come aboard it, and uh, you know, man the turrets and uh, sleep in beds, you know, and and you can carry them across the the galaxy. Um, and you can all get off the ship, go into uh, caverns or, or bunkers and, and fight first person. And, or you can mine or you can do all kinds of things personally, you know, first person. So it's really something. You're wow. actually flying the ship instead of being the ship. Wow. That's cool. So, and the graphics are incredible. Wow. Everything looks created by like a grand uh, creator. Star citizen. Yeah. Have to remember that. that. Was sometime this week, look up some videos. 
on YouTube for for Star Citizen. You will be amazed at the graphics. Fantastic. I'm just glad that game's actually, you know, fruition. It's actually coming out. Yeah. So it wasn't like one yeah. big scam and people are enjoying it. That's that's well, really it is pre-release. I have to say that. Okay. You can only play it pre-release because it is not out yet. Okay. John Richards, continuing the quest for chaos. How have you been, my friend? <laughs> Well, uh, uh, first of all, I want to mention ChatGPT, which is fantastic software that okay. you should all have a go at if you haven't already. Because please, please introduce the concept. I'm only familiar with that. It had some correlation with Google and was like an AI something. It's it's yeah, it's an AI, but it's not Google. It's better than than Google. Okay, because it 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 can write stuff. It's revolutionary. It is yes. It can. You remember. Um, Oh, what was his name? Uh, uh, I've got a brain freeze on this now. Um, the... Mark Twain? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, no. no I'm thinking that there was... No, no. Crumpets, uh, crumpets. Everybody just say English. <laughs> <laughs> Stop coming up with everything English. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm trying to think of um, this this guy who spoke in BS. And there was a, a, a little software which made a quotation for you in his style. Uh, what was he called? Um, I'll think of his name. Like C.S. Lewis, Lewis or? No, 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 no. It's, it's some, I'll think of his name later in the show. Leave me to it. Oh. But the thing is that this is like that software grown up. And it can really provide convincing text. And you put questions in, and then you can ask it to praise what it's just said, or go into greater depth on a particular bullet point. It is fan bloody tastic. Okay, and and, and you're using permanence. it. And you're using um, it for what purpose, though? I was wondering. Yeah. Well, I, I'm, it's going to revolutionise the whole of society because, in future, all university assignments will be submitted by this machine <laughs> and they will be indistinguishable high school yeah yeah they will be indistinguishable from you know a grade students i don't know what's going to happen it is incredible anyway getting back to me 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 what have i done well i've, I've been having a lot of fun making my little short videos i think i've cracked it you know, we have this thing in the UK, which is called Thought for the Day, which comes out every morning on the radio. And it's a priest, Muller, you know, yeah. some cleric giving us a little three minute snippet of his wisdom on the radio. Right. And, and I, I've, I've copied that technique and I've done little three minute videos and I've incorporated clips from other people and they're getting hundreds of views and I'm gaining at least one subscriber a day, which I've, ne really? you know, oh, cool. I've never, I've never been working so well. Anyway, yeah. um, oh, what's his name? Deepak Chopra. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You can, yeah. I think you can actually use the app that generates some yeah. nonsensical uh, yeah. a phrase Deep. that you can, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, cool. deep at ease. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's like an early version of Chat hmm. GPT. <laughs> gotcha. And before we get too scared with what the future might bring, here's some silver lining to it. So, like at our job, we work with a lot of robots. We design robots that can do functions, and it's called automation. And typically, when people have a job where all day long they're just taking a piece from one conveyor belt, flipping <laughs> it upside down, and putting on another conveyor belt. That's not yeah. a rewarding job for anybody. Not only that, but it leads to a lot of ergonomic strain or mm. just mental, you know, drain stagnation from, yeah. from just doing this all day. Like that's literally yeah. the job. So when we come up with a robot, we give that person an opportunity to fulfill themselves in a much higher advanced level role or uh, open up a new opportunity for someone to design something more interesting or build, be a, ro uh, a robot technician rather than just a f item flipper. Like we, we advance our society to a higher status, uh, more meaningful jobs. And so instead of people, you know, whatever job we had back in the day where it's like, everyone's either a ditch digger or a blacksmith, <laughs> which are both fine. You need those jobs. But now we have a much greater flavor of different kinds of careers and professions people can get into as a result of technology 
coming about. So these are good things when I hear, oh, we have something that can make writing school as Simon's wrote. It's like, good. So now maybe we can go from just paraphrasing chapters and books to critically understanding the nature of what was said and and oh. pushing back on some of the ideas that were uh, presented by the author himself or herself and figure out <laughs> what we need to change and stuff like that. Yeah, we questions. can at least hope that the student will read the essays that the AI generates and, and get the point of the assignment. <laughs> or at least get new essays because I'm tired of reading the same four books in high school over and over again. I went to yeah. like four different high schools and I had to read the same four books over again. It was terrible. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Guys, we did a nice little recap. Oh my gosh, we're almost at the bottom of the half hour. Let me at least introduce the topic. This is what we're going to do. I'm going to introduce the topic, and then we're going to get into questions from our Reddit. Here is the first one. All right. So why not? Let me let me take myself off of mute. Good to recap, everybody. Here's the first topic, and we can go into it a little bit into this next section as well. But Honest Classic 6950 asks, why not destroy Satan? His question is, if Satan or Lucifer is such a bad being, why didn't God just destroy him? Saying that, oh, Satan sucks. I hate his butt. Like, bruh, you're already <laughs> powerful. Just destroy Satan or beat him up or lock him up permanently in hell with his demons. Like this scenario makes no sense to me when I was in Catholic school. If Satan and his demons suck so much, why not destroy them completely to save everyone the trouble? Or for John Richards, everyone the bother. John Richards, <laughs> what do you think? Why doesn't God just destroy Satan? Well, why did he make him in the first place? That's yeah, the first also, question, surely. Also good question. Yeah, he should know that he was going to be bad. Yes, yes. It was part of the plan. It is, it's the classic problem of evil, right? Mm. Yeah, and the thing is, if, if God or anyone destroys Satan, there's no one to blame for all the children dying of cancer. Mm -hmm. Except the God himself. Yes, he yes. doesn't want that, does he? he doesn't, no, can't do he, that. He, doesn't, he only wants praise. He doesn't want blame. It's almost like God has a department blame either. in a in a company where it's like not the complaints department, but the the praise. The, the he has a praise department. That's him. He's the CEO of the praise department. But he also has like another department where it's like anything bad. That's the blame department. Anything yes. bad. Send it's, all your blame to this area here. It's the yeah. good cop, bad cop on a celestial level. Come on. Yeah. Yes, exactly. and it's, Every it's, television show is based on that uh, premise. You know, the good, no, it's cop, good bad cop, cop, bad cop. And it's Tom and Jerry, too. If uh, Tom ever caught Jerry or the coyote in the, yeah. the road yeah. runner, you wouldn't the have story a show. would end. It would be no so now, story. So I do have umbrage with that Dread Pirate because if you were to ask me, and here's the most controversial thing I've said multiple times, but the good cop would be Satan in my head because the bad cop is clearly the guy who's allowing all the bad stuff to happen. Yes, Satan yes. has on multiple occasions acted in the yeah. interests of people. He's oh, gone yeah. uh -huh. even said, hey, listen, I know you don't understand me. Here's the situation. You're going to need to eat this so you have ideas of good morals and stuff like that. Let A decide on her own. He, Satan's gone to Jesus and was like, hey, if you want to worship me, I'll feed you. It looks like you're starving yourself on this mountain. And Jesus is like, I will never worship you. And Satan's like, I'm not going to pressure it. I'll see you later. Bye. It's Satan who goes up to like heaven where God's at. And God's like, hey, let's kill some people. And Satan's like, I don't know, man. <laughs> it's like, God's yeah. like, no, no, no. Look, I got this guy named Job. He loves me so much. I'm yeah, gonna Job. Exactly. Life. I'm gonna right. destroy him. Exactly. It's going to be awesome. Let's mm -hmm. take bets. And Satan's yeah. like, this is, yeah. I mean, you already know the outcome of this bet. What are we doing right now? What are we doing? Right. Like, oh, yeah, this is yeah. awesome. I love it. Well, there's in the, if you look at the Bible, and somebody's done this, they've added together all the people that God killed mm. and right. all the people that Satan killed. And Satan's killed, I don't know, half a dozen. But God has killed the entire population of the world. Yeah. Now, homie, well, plus I'm all the people that he gave plagues to. Yes. yes yeah. Exactly. Could you? What's the example where Satan's killed somebody? Uh, you, man, that beats me. There's not one. Uh, yeah, I don't think there is any. I don't think there's no. a single one. Whereas God yeah. kills nearly the entire population of Earth in chapter one, and or then, even harmed anyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At most, Satan's like, "Here's an option. I'm going to let you know it. I'm not forcing you to do it. In fact, in certain cases, the person he's talking to doesn't have an awareness of right or wrong anyway. Right. So, like, that was like, you know, but he he was enough. telling the truth. He wasn't, and it was a truth. Truth every single time. Yeah, yeah, honestly. And honestly, what was his biggest, the biggest crime Satan has ever written in the book himself, in the book itself, to give cl clarity of like how God leverages his own ego is mm -hmm. Satan thought he was more beautiful than God. 
that is yeah. the number one crime in the Bible for Lucifer. So it's an interesting yeah. concept. In my head, it's like um, if there was a bad cop, good cop, it's like the show was called Good Cop, but it had the titles flipped accidentally because like the good cop or God wrote the, the movie after himself. It was just like, right. you're not the good cop guy. He's like, no, play, <clears throat> let Brad Pitt play me. He's like, yeah. you're dude, you're 400 right. pounds. Right. I don't care. But we need to take a break at this point. All right. uh, we'll be back with this same topic. We'll be carrying on here in a little bit. So stay tuned for the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour here on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We'll be right back after this short break. Welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. I'm DJ Doubter 5. Let's talk a moment about the Atheist Society of Knoxville. ASK was founded in 2002. We're in our 21st year now. We have over a thousand members. We have weekly in-person meetings every Tuesday evening in Knoxville's Old City at Barley's Taproom and Pizzeria. I'll be right after work around 5.30. Look for us inside at the high top tables or if it's pretty weather outside on the deck. We also have a Tuesday evening Zoom Ask Meetup. If you'd like to join us, email us for details at askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org or letschatse at gmail.com. You can find us online at Facebook, meetup.com, or go to our website at knoxvilleatheist.org, or you can just Google Knoxville Atheist. It's just that simple. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to meet up and do a search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one? Start one. one. Right. Well, Wombat, where do you want to pick up? Why doesn't God just destroy Satan? We have gone over some interesting um, uh, uh, research over the break, and we found out that Satan's toll would be 10 people. It, uh, this is from a uh, website that uh, Jonathan posted by Wired um, from some deeper digging down, we found that it appears that Satan only killed 10 people, the seven sons and three daughters of Job. And he only does this because God wanted, allowed, and made it happen as part of a bet. Technically, the blood is on God's hands for these as well. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, wow. even in the garden, when he, when he, uh, theoretically doomed to man time he hmm. was actually telling the truth it was god that was lying god yeah. said that you would die if you ate the fury print yeah. but i do want to die i do want to stay on the killing topic because i want to imagine a scenario where we have two people one person we'll call him person a tells person b listen i will give you this much money let's bet i will give you this much money if you win the bet and i'll take this much money if i win the bet here's a gun i want you to kill that person right there that's the person who i want you to kill please kill that person and i can and we'll do it over a reward for a bet how's that sound even if that person person b commits the murder and gets arrested the other person get arrested for conspiracy for murder or accessory it's to a murder. contract contract yeah. For murder. yeah 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 exactly like that is uh, an incentivized means of causing harm in the public. And of course, we want to protect ourselves from that. Larry, you okay. also made a really good point that since God is in charge of everything, every single murder that's ever happened, he he has been uh, accessory to murder for. It. And I think yeah, that's yeah. a really startling concept. <clears throat> right. If but, you know about it beforehand, don't do anything or don't notify the authorities. You're an accessory. Yeah. Mm. But in the interest of balance, just within the Bible, God is responsible for the deaths of 2,038,344 victims. Yeah, and that's not counting the entire earth, right? I don't know what the population was back then. but I don't think anybody does. Right. I I was going to bring up this this book here, The Skeptic's Annotated Bible. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's it's broken. It just, you know, goes through the entire Bible and points out all the, uh, all the, you know, salient points that any skeptic should be aware of it actually breaks it down into 13 categories instances of absurdity injustice cruelty intolerance good stuff contradictions interpretation misogyny sex prophecy language politics and homosexuality so this book has got it all man cool so my thoughts on this is when god's not involved satan's not killing anybody 
And I think it's it's pretty clear that whenever there's a murder that does take place, God is involved. <laughs> well, if he's all powerful and could prevent it too. So maybe maybe the problem isn't getting rid of Satan. Maybe we should just get rid of God. Why doesn't God get rid of himself? Like that could be the <laughs> the most immediate way to solve a lot of trouble and bother overall. That's my take. Anyone else want to add to that? Okay, cool. Hey, we're working on it. <laughs> uh okay so next question this one's going out to uh john richards john richards let me throw this question up at you why are okay so difficult plankton 467 asked us why are so many people obsessed with personifying the unknown um as a species there's a lot we still don't know a couple thousand years ago uh we knew less than what we did now so creative minds came up with religion to explain what reasoning we couldn't In some, in some certain sects, it seems that even people who identify as non-religious can't help but talk about things like non-duality without referring to the unknown or unknowable aspects of God, if you will. It seems rather narcissistic to think that in this unimaginably large universe, anything that is unknown is somehow anthropomorph- anthropomorphized by default. And you might want known? to define those terms as well, personification and anthropomorphizing sure. before you go into what you think. The, yeah, okay. unknown, the unknown should be exciting and motivating. What do you think about that, John? Well, personification means conceiving of an agent to be behind whatever cause you're investigating, whatever phenomenon you are observing. And why we do that? Well, I have a, I have a theory, of course, and it's because the only things that we know the historically have known the causes of have been done by men. I mean, we know that men make bricks, make swords, everything that's make food, you know, make fire, everything that we know was done, was started off, has been done by an agent in the form of a human, right? And therefore, it's when we find something that's happening that we don't know how it started, then the natural tendency is to wonder what agent, what person might be doing that. So that, and that's why you get Thor is making thunder, you know, uh, the volcano is making <laughs> volcanic eruptions and so on and so forth. There, there's always got to be, because of our experience of this being the cause of everything that the only one that we can actually pin down being an agent in the form of a man therefore we extrapolate that and say that all these other things that we can't see how they began must be another agent right yeah it's it's actually called hyperactive agency detection that's a a well-known psychological phenomenon it's also tied in with pareidolia where you see patterns and faces in in either inanimate objects or certainly non-animal um, features of the environment, like clouds and and uh, seeing Jesus on a piece of toast or whatever. Right. It's, it's right. you know it's the pattern making portion of our brain. That's how kids, you know, babies come out of the womb and yes. recognize their mother's face because yes. they're hardwired uh, to find those patterns and and formulate them in cases where they're not even there so as a guy with a biochemistry degree that is the default most instinctual way how we understand the world and it's how all of our hormones work when we do something bad we get pain sensation it's like oh this is a bad thing i got it when we do something that feels good we get pleasure hormones now we associate that with good things it's all pattern-based recognition of how we operate And, and in the modern world we live in a completely fabricated environment you know the we live in man-made houses. We drive on man-made roads, in right. man-made cars. Right. You know, we, we eat out of man-made containers. So We go to man-made parks and we yes, think, oh, yes. God made this. It's like, nope, there was a guy who planted each of these trees, most likely. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yes. So the temptation there is to make the assumption that there is somebody, some creature, some agent doing everything. Mm-hmm. At a microcosm, I also find parallels between the popularity of simulation theory versus how often simulation becomes part of the mainstream discourse of people. Or when we start using simulations more and more, 
simulation theory becomes more and more popular because more people understand it and they can use that as an analogy to explain unknown aspects of reality. And so whenever I see people appealing to simulation theory, it's like, here's a that's that's a thing people didn't do 100 years ago when computers weren't near, nearly as sophisticated, but as a reliance on computer uh, models and, and uh, adaptations became more prevalent. I would not be surprised if maybe 40 years down the road, we have a new theory called AI theory and God's just one giant AI owned by a giant corporation or something like that. That's just controlling everything. It sounds silly to us now, but as we can become more part of the mainstream, it just becomes <clears throat> more commonplace. It's the exact yeah. same reason why we call God our father, because most people who exist have fathers and they mm -hmm. say, hey, God's just the heavenly father. It's an analogy yeah. that people can grasp onto. It's just another pattern. Yeah. Uh, He's the guy. What He's the guy behind the curtain in somewhere over the rainbow. Right. What John was saying about parks being God made and no, we made them. It reminded me of a joke is a, a preacher came up on this guy, a farmer who his fields look lush and all full of crop and all that. And he says, well, farmer John, he says, uh, God really took care of your, your crop this year. You're, it looks wonderful. He says, yeah, but you should have seen what it looked like when I was sick for a month. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> I also, let me tell you something. I'm also really annoyed by this too. This is a small little tangent, but I saw a, a football clip. I can't even tell you who the two teams were, but basically the kicker, football in, in American football, John Richards, sorry. Uh, American NFL football, guy kicked a field goal and won the the event for his team. Uh, see how much about sports I know, guys. Anyway, when he's being lifted up by his team, he like lifts up, he pulls out a cross from around his neck and starts pointing at it because he's like, aha, that's the reason why I won. And in my head, it's like, okay, so first of all, the reason why you won was the team that's underneath you because you only have to win by a couple of points. Points aren't worth the difference in the score differential that you guys had, you know, coming into it. Like a lot of touchdowns were made before then. Secondly, how many Christians were on the other opposing team who lost, <laughs> yes. right? Like you never That's really, right. you don't film the other people who are all pulling out their Jesus crosses and looking at them confused and being like, God, I thought you had my back. You made him the chosen person. You always show the winner. And the third one that always gets me angry is this guy, after all of his hard work, after all the investment, after all the football practices his parents drove him to, after all the scholarships he got that other people couldn't get, after all the training that people were hired to be on his team went to explicitly train him, him specifically, and take time away from their families to invest in him. When he's ready to like mm -hmm. highlight his achievement, he doesn't say thank you to anybody else who helps him. He just like points at the one thing that makes him think that he's God's chosen person for yeah. that mm -hmm. one night, the yeah. God's most yeah. important person, despite all the people in harm or babies needing to be born with like misshapen hearts or anything like that. He's the number one because he kicked that yeah. field goal. It's just yeah, yeah. such a degree of narcissism that I just can't. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Hubris. Hmm. The other team, the other team, of course, accidentally had all their crosses on their necklaces upside down <laughs> oh that was the problem Dang they're it. facing backwards yeah actually dread your sound went away ty my Dread Pirate, got a question to you from our own Dread Pirate Higgs off of our uh show called just let you wear hats where we were talking about why does the government need to step in for people who are choosing to express themselves or their religious identities in a non-violent, non-harmful fashion, as in kind as other religions are allowed to do so? You know, so if some people can wear turbans, why can't you wear a pirate hat? Like, what's the distinction there if the technology barrier allows for it? Why make a rule to take away from certain groups and give to others based on their religious affiliations? It seems fundamentally flawed and unfair so mm -hmm. that is trading room says with today's technology we don't need photos of the whole head we only need the face or we just need the retinas or fingerprints so why do we still stick to photos of the whole head yeah. it's just a question he's asking and the next one he says plus fighting the system is a waste of time instead of fighting look for solutions which will satisfy both sides in other words don't create more problems create solutions what do you think? <laughs> it's, I mean, uh, thank, thank, I thank da Dada's trading room for, for his uh, response. And we always love Dada's trading room. We've had a bit of a back and forth, and um, it's turning into a rather unproductive conversation, unfortunately. But um, you know, you know, I asked him to define fighting, 
because you can conflate anything to be included in that in order to render everything some form of fighting. Uh, so just having a, you know, a, a debate with somebody is a form of, you know, back and forth opposition to somebody else's idea. It's not, it's not uh, rendered uh, wrong to do so by virtue of the fact that you're opposing somebody else's opinion. Um, and systems are not meant to be worked well within I mean, I do as much as I can, and I think I expressed that at the very beginning of the show. Uh, I'm not standing outside of the offices with signs uh, calling ICBC a bunch of goofballs or, uh, you know, uh, prejudiced bastards or whatever. Um, you know, I'm, I'm working within the system in order to come up with a solution. Because yeah. like I say, you know, institutions are created by people who are generally stupid. They just don't, you know, there's no way that, you know, people can figure this all out. And of course, they have to start from somewhere. Um, and generally speaking, uh, you know, institutions are created by uh, the prevailing, uh, prevailing religious group. Uh, they're certainly manned by them. And so, uh, you know, they're, they're, you know, they see a, a you know, pasta ferry with a, with a, a tricorn, and they say, well, that person is making fun mm. of me is making fun of my institution and where i have the power to thwart him i shall and and so really the system is not is fighting me right i'm working within the system but the system is fighting me because i am the out no the, because the system was made alien. for you the system was made for them and so uh, correct yes exactly yeah, yeah. and so, so yeah it is against you and you know uh i appreciate the approach that you're going through like the 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 systematic peaceful approach is a use as a necessary arm for change and i also find that it's one of the easiest ones to dismiss by those in power but you are yes. well documenting it and i yes, don't think they aren't aware of the hypocrisy i definitely think there are some christians that can empathize with you especially in just like a straightforward conversation about it one-to-one -one, face to face and not through bureaucracy but they won't act on it because they have the benefit they have the benefit it mm -hmm. reminds me of an episode of star trek where there was like clearly a, a, an alien race that got captured in the jar and they're like why are we in jars we have just as much intelligence as you and i think kirk was like it's not because we're moral that we're doing this it's because we're stronger and that's all he could offer it's not the fact that we're better than you that we're putting in jars it's just because we're stronger than you and we can't risk you getting out that's right, all there right. is to it sorry yeah. sorry i know i'm being flawed but I'm doing this just because I can and I have okay. to. Well, it, it actually reminds me also of the episode of Star Trek where the oh, computer created Moriarty hmm. and Moriarty was then able to reprogram the computer. So, it, so it, essentially it was what you say is like an intelligence had to be kept into a jar because uh, it risked their existence, right? Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah I like this idea of jars. I mean... Pickled aliens? That, there's a new market, surely, for that. But if All you right. think about it, the whole reason we put people in jail is because we have to, for self-preservation, we can't have them wandering around society continuing to do the same things that they've been doing. Yeah. Right. So we have the power to put them away and keep them away from society, so we do. Mm -hmm. And the weird thing is, is like we know we don't have a perfect system with regard to putting people in boxes. We know we have a system that definitely unduly targets certain groups of populations more than others and doesn't met out the same degree of punishment based on gender or skin color like we know that for a fact yet we still pertain to it is it is it partly due to the fact that it the people who make the rules aren't affected by the rules possibly like that yeah, yeah. <laughs> might be able to make, like that might be a part of it too so i'm saying yeah, like no it's systematic of human culture it's systematic of a lot of human cultures the the injustices that you're seeing right now dread so uh, well, i can definitely it, empathize when, with you. when the environment changes and the, mm. you know the population mixes up a bit mm. then obviously the rules have got to evolve right and it's and that's why there's just as much fight against that mixing up like it wasn't until very recently in american culture that it was illegal for interracial marriage to even exist yeah like, sure, that had to be protected right? right and we take that for granted but <clears> in the society that we're in now and that's good 
that we do, but it's also something that we should be aware of so it doesn't get taken away from us because we also yeah. had things that we've taken for granted be taken away from us too. Yeah. But you know, it's interesting that, you know, the change there for interracial marriage, mm. it was a hard thing for society to, to get on board with. Mm. And, but you would think that over these, over the times where this has been the case, where, you know, society has had to come to terms with this big change, that it would be make change easier the next to time. come to terms with. Right. But, uh, you know, we see with uh, homosexual, uh, you know, gay marriage, that, um, Again, it's, you know, it's a tough fight that yeah. one group has to fight in order to effect change. So, and, and it takes, society has a hard time coming to terms with it every time. Right. The way how I think about it is... Can I have a word on that pot, too? Because uh, we have uh, a situation here in the UK where the... Who's, who's going me? Yeah, go on, John. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the situation we have, the situation we have currently in the UK, is that the established church, the Church of England, is having a disagreement internally about whether or not to marry homosexuals, you know, LGBTQI plus people, and there's two schools of thought. Some of the bishops think we should be more tolerant and we should marry them in church because, you know, they love each other. They've got um, they've been faithful to each other and and there's no reason to discriminate against them. And then the traditionalists, they say we can't do that. It says in the Bible, it's a sin. Mm. So at the moment, it looks as though the Anglican Church might split into two halves, the, the pro-gay marriage and the anti-gay marriage. Right. And the question is, if that happens before May this year, the question is, who's going to crown the king? Right. Right. Uh, so I wanted to bring up an analogy. Like, we have a pot. We're one big pot, all society. And when we find out interracial marriage is okay and totally fine, we're, like, stirring a certain section of that pot. We're just making a small circle. But the area in that in that vicinity goes from being cold on the top, hot on the bottom to now just warmed up all around. It's more homogeneous, right? But because we stirred in that particular area, it doesn't mean the other corner of the pot is any more evenly distributed. It's still gonna have a hot bottom. It might even have a more hot bottom because it has been unstirred for even longer. But we did get better at stirring, which means the mechanics have gotten better. We've learned from how to stir properly. We understand how to get more people motivated in it. We have demonstration that it works. We have people that can be motivated. We have uh, stories and narratives that we can tell that we know are functional and work and effective. And we can take that same energy and go to the next side of the pot. So yes, mm -hmm. if we stir one corner of our pot, we may not mix everything, but we at least get better at stirring. And so we have to just continue to stir because it's that flux that keeps us all from burning at the bottom as is the best way I can put it. Sorry, I, I got stuck when you said hot bottom. Yeah, I want to hear more about the hot bottom. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. So, yeah, asexuality. You know, my brain but, doesn't Ty, isn't, isn't it the case that uh, in, you know, politically speaking, sure. um, people are more divided than ever? I mean, you know, the, you know, political races like the presidency are won by a few points. Like, you know, it's it's crazy how close and how divided people are like in america in uh, britain there with the brexit right i think it was mm -hmm. 51 in favor and 49 against or something i mean you know why oh, if if it's so unclear that that if the issue is so unclear that people are so equally divided um is it really a fair thing to impose uh, the winning side to any question when it's only by one percent, because you have you have almost an equally uh, an equal yeah. amount of people who are going to be dissatisfied with the outcome. Exactly. You know, right? the, su the suggestion is in future, if we ever do that, and I suggest we shouldn't. Referendums are a bad idea because they <laughs> push the decision down from the experts who might know what they're talking about to yes. to Joe Public. You know, yeah. and. But the suggestion is, if we ever do it again, what we need is a super majority, so that yes, seventy percent or more. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. At least two thirds. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Larry, I got the last question. Perfect for you. world. Are you ready for this? Okay. 
what do I, uh, Unicycle Co-Pilot wants to know, what do I do with all these Bibles I've taken from hotel rooms? <laughs> you know what I... Well, you there's mulch. You can always mulch them. Yeah. You know what I do? <laughs> like in Canada, they don't, they don't uh, put them in hotel rooms anymore. But I do bring, uh, I do bring my, um, my postcards, my pastafarian postcards, yeah. and I put them where the Gidgeon's Bible used to be. So mm. I'm, I'm spreading the word. Yeah, I, used to I put just my YouTube channel of business cards inside them and just put them right. <laughs> there. I don't, I don't like taking them because I, then I have the burden of what am I going to do with them all? <laughs> yeah, I just great. open them to the first page and write and strike out the. Uh, in the beginning and put it and write in once upon a time <laughs> right. yeah, and leave yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, perfect well done guys hey we made it to the end of the show let's do some plugging before we wrap up today sure uh, john richards anything you'd like to plug free thought channel that's nice. where i do my stuff and uh, you'll find lots of new videos there lots of short ones mm. which are well worth taking a look at they don't take up much of your time they are little pithy events that um, gets an idea across in a concise way. And right. you guys, some of you guys are going to join me hopefully tonight. Right. Tonight here, UK time, when we make the latest recording of Views on the News. I can tell you right now, it's balmy and buggy. It's just straight up like UK weather. Isn't that right, John Richards? Out here right now. So we can't play disc golf. So guess who's showing up? I'll, I'll be there. Okay. <laughs> well, you're welcome. Hey. <laughs> uh jed pirate higgs where can we find your stuff at yeah you can find me on youtube on my channel mind pirate m-i-n-d-p-y-r-a-t-e uh, i'm looking forward to putting on some more content so um you know stay tuned check it out if you like it uh subscribe and tick the bell and the thumbs up and all that good stuff thank you nice you can find my stuff on let's chat I'm on YouTube and feel free to continue to watch these shows. We keep pumping them out weekly and we're happy to have you leave more comments. We'll be happy to go over them. And if you have any questions, feel free to post them onto our Reddit group or talk on our discord channel. Uh, the descriptions will be in the comment section. Larry, after all the talking we've done, you've yet to explain what a soul is and why we all have them <laughs> and uh, what's the value of soul. So would you mind going into that? Everyone well, let, let Larry explain why souls are real for a second. You have yeah, not, not going to happen. They're not. <laughs> Again, explain it if it ain't real. No, uh, I just invite people to uh, to research you know, what we know about souls. I mean, actually do some research. You'll, you'll find that nobody has ever uh, shown a soul to be real. Uh, no ghosts are real. Uh, I mean, even the professional ghost hunters on TV mm. on 13 seasons haven't found a single ghost. So get a clue. My YouTube channel can be found at uh, at Doubter5. Uh, my regular content can be found at 